The war in Ukraine has sparked renewed focus on the plight of refugees around the world. Tens of millions of people have been forced to flee their homes. The animated documentary Flee chronicles one refugee's harrowing journey out of Afghanistan. The movie has received critical acclaim, including three Oscar nominations. Let's play a bit of it for you now. Wow, for more on this, let's bring in the film's director, Jonas Poer Rasmussen. Good to see you again. Good to see you. So this movie, even though it's specifically about one man's journey, your friend that you met in high school, and it is done in a way, yes, it's an animated film, as we just showed, but it's got clips of it that are filmed clips. Um, to me, the larger theme, at least what I took away from it, is that, yes, this is one man's journey, but there are millions of people around the world who are going through exactly the same situation, where they are forced to flee a country um, because of either war or some other uh, calamity that affects them, and the journey that it takes from them, for them to get from one point to another where they can find food, comfort, shelter, safety, and residency. Is that what you wanted to, is that what you wanted people to take away from it? Yeah, definitely, and, and you know, I, I, I really wanted to give some new ones to Refugee Story, uh, because this is a refugee story told from the inside of a friendship. I was hoping that I could kind of show something more and show, you know, that a refugee is not just a refugee, that being a refugee is not an identity. It's a circumstance of life and something you go through, and then hopefully you're able to move to the other side and start to build a life of yourself, for yourself. Uh, so this is a story about a human being who happened to also be a refugee, but he's so much more as well. Yeah, yeah I think that's definitely something you get from that. Yeah. I think that including, uh, I don't want to give too much away, but including his sexual orientation yes. was a reminder that he had all, all the other challenges that we all deal with, our identity, what we want to do for life, just our future, and then layered on top of it is this harrowing experience. Um, and, and so I wanted to sort of talk a little bit um, about that because I think that from, our, from many people's point of view, the, you know, you become a refugee, you sort of, you, you're approved, you get into a system, and the system takes care of you. And before you know it, you've found, you're living a new life somewhere else. And what you find is that the system is very messy and incomplete. And throughout this whole process, he, he and his entire family are essentially fending for themselves. Mm. What, what do people need to know about sort of the refugee system? Because we talk about how much we care for these pe for people who are in need, but really, oftentimes they're left out on their own. No, but totally. And, and I think it's just um, crucial that we kind of understand like how important it is that, that we, now we see in, in Europe how, how the countries open their borders and mm. their arms and their hearts. And I think that's really the crucial part of this, that we need to understand that we need to open up to these people yeah. and understand that they all have individual stories and come from, from different places and need to have a system that kind of accommodates that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and stay open. I mean, because even what we're seeing between Ukraine and Poland is an improvised system. Right. I mean, people are pouring over the border and they're kind of making it up as they go along, right. which leads to re a really insecure future for the people who are in need. Sorry, Vlad. No, I was going to say that, you know, um, what's fascinating, too, is that you decided to make the film as an animated film because you were trying to protect your friend's identity and the name that he uses in the film is not his real name. Um, and yet I was struck, you said something that is even though we've covered refugee and refugee crises for many years as journalists, you said it's a, they, he was a victim of circumstance. Before, when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan, this, that was one circumstance mm. that changed and upended his world and his family's world. When the Mujahideen took over, that was another set of circumstances that upended his world. Um, and then he found his way to Denmark, right. where he still, just to be able to find refuge, had to lie to the people, um, the immigration authorities there, and say that his entire family had been killed even though they had not. And now he's living in Denmark, and what is his situation now? If, if the authorities were to know 
that he lied, that he came into the country under those circumstances, what might they do? That's another fear, Anne-Marie, that you were talking about. Every day you wake up and you don't know who's going to be knocking at your door. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But luckily, you know, we, we, when we started doing this project, it, it, because he's a dear friend of mine, of course, uh, I, uh, I wanted to make sure that there was no legal precautions for him. Uh, so we got his file from the government and I had him turn look at it. And, and, you know, he was given asylum because he was an underage uh, refugee right. from a war-torn country and not because of his backstory. Ah. He just didn't know. He didn't know? Oh, and, 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 oh my God. See, that she is... was needlessly living in fear. Yeah, and, wow. and, 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 and the human traffickers, they don't know the law. They're just yes. going to do whatever to kind of get people in there, you know? Right. Uh, so they told him, hey, here's what you say. Yeah. Even though he would have been able to uh, seek and receive asylum in Denmark by just saying, I'm an underage minor fleeing a war-torn country. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Um, well, I encourage people to check out uh, the movie. It's on Hulu. Yes. Let's see wherever you can. It's um, really wonderful. It's very, it's very really good. Yeah. Um, and I think it almost works better as an animated um, film because I think through animation, through art, um, you can express more emotion. Yeah, so and not only that, you remember the scene where he, he's obsessed with Jean-Claude Van Damme, yeah. as all of us were in the 1980s. Yeah. Um, Jean-Claude doing it, those splits. Right, doing the splits, <laughs> but he imagines, in the animation imagines Jean-Claude Van Damme winking at him, yeah. right? And that's his mind, like, he, you know, I thought that was really beautifully yeah. done. Yeah. Really, really well done, yes. Um, Jonas Poer, uh, Rasmussen, thank you so much. Thanks for having me.